one of the things that we really wanted to do with the film was have Jenny and Rosie speak about their experience and give them a platform to tell their story, that this wasn't being told just from a grassroots organization or that we were focusing on ICE or Homeland Security, um, that it was a very personal and intimate story from people who experienced the trauma firsthand. Posteriormente me quitaron a mi hijo menor que tenía en ese momento cuatro, cinco añitos. Um, the first, she was separated from her older son, who at the time was 15 years old. He was put in a different part of the detention center, so she could occasionally see him through the glass, but he was in a separate area. Her younger son, who was five at the time, stayed with her on the women's side of the detention center, but eventually was separated as well. And then the two of them were sent to a foster care center in New York while she remained in detention, and they were separated for 81 days. It doesn't feel like a very united country or the land of the free, that's for sure. And what it says to me is that our immigration system is broken. And we need to sort of tear the whole system down and start over again. Immigrants have always been contributors in the United States. And it has made us a melting pot of very talented and very specialized people, as well as hard workers. Mm -hmm. I would, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say the other thing, a byproduct of the film, which was really evident when we first met Rosie and Jenny, is that they always had hope. There's this deep resource within that allowed them to believe in the goodness of others. And thankfully, they connected with really amazing people who fulfilled that belief. What for me is most profound about the documentary is seeing how Rosie and Jenny and their families are striving to build a life here and that they add something, right? They're not threatening us, they're not taking anything away. They're all contributing something and want to be part of building what the American dream is. It's not, I'm just here to take the American dream, it's here, I'm here to be part of it and I'm here to build it with you. Puesto que fuimos tratados básicamente como criminales en el momento de nuestro ingreso. She says uh, they were treated like criminals, that it was not a welcoming reception, and that as human beings, that everybody should be treated at least with respect. There's violence. These women are refugees, and there's violence that they are trying to come safely to our country, and we are treating them as criminals, as opposed to the way that we should be treating them, which is with open arms and embracing them. What was the first thing that you tried to do for these people, the very first thing? So the very first thing is we raised bond money for Jenny. The plan was never for this to become an organization um, or to go after nonprofit status or for it to take over our entire lives. Um, the idea was really to take one mom out of detention among a group of angry friends and raise some money to pay her bond and get her out and bring her back with her kids and then also to accompany her in that process of seeking asylum because it's a long process, it's really complicated, um, particularly for somebody who isn't born here or who doesn't speak English as a first language, if at all. It's a very difficult system to navigate. And so if you don't have a supportive community of folks around you to sort of not just help you figure out the logistics of that, but also to sort of provide the moral support necessary, um, I think you can really flounder and end up in a really challenging situation. So our goal was to provide her with an ongoing community of support, providing housing and legal service and medical, dental, mental health care, groceries, making sure her kids were in school, that they were safe and stable as they pursued asylum. And what happened was that so many people saw that and wanted to be part of that because they saw how effective and fast we were able to take her out, that they just kept sending money and we were able to take out more and more moms. So Rosie was the sixth mother for whom we posted bond and to date we have paid bond for 124 um, people and reunited their families and then have really touched thousands of other families through our detention and border support programs. What were the facilities like that they were in? Más humanos, más conscientes, un poco más empáticos hacia la sociedad. No se pide mucho, simplemente ser empáticos. She said there are a lot of ways that a person could respond to that question, but basically all the answers come back to the fact that if you're not treating someone with basic human respect, um, it filters out to all the aspects of operation of the facility. And she was saying in her particular case, just as one tiny example, that she um, had some significant pain and they said to her, it's only if you're on your deathbed that we'll take you to medical or we'll take you to the hospital. And that is by no means an outlier. Um, in the film we talk about one mom, Irma, who was Jenny's cellmate 
who when she was in detention was vomiting blood, um, she couldn't eat. She was clearly very ill and repeatedly went to the medical officials in the facility who told her drink more water and take an ibuprofen and go back to your bed. Um, when she got out of the hospital, she was diagnosed um, with esophagus cancer and um, died shortly thereafter, leaving her two children um, with her sister. Ultimately, the children returned to Guatemala to live with an abusive father. Um, and a doctor who was the admitting doctor when she went to the hospital, taken by one of our volunteers, said, we absolutely believe that had she gotten treatment and diagnosis while she was in detention, she would still be alive today. So the kinds of um, circumstances that Rosie's describing are pervasive. We've heard them from hundreds of people in detention. Has there been any change since the uh, new administration? I think the film shows that this is, it's not just a Trump administration issue, right? Certainly the kinds of things that we saw during the Trump administration were the most extreme iterations of policies of exclusion and um, rejection and a lack of basic human respect that we've seen inform immigration policies in this country for more than a century. So um, my short answer to your question is no. <laughs> No, Biden has not done anything, okay? And in fact, he has actually said, no, we're not going to pay for the injuries that have happened to the people that our country has done to. So not only is he not doing what he promised he would do, he's actually not even passing the laws that are very, very simple for him to pass right now that could protect these women. And so they don't see people as individuals with unique histories and dreams and goals. Um, and family compositions. They just sort of see everybody as one big unit. Statistic. And statistic, yeah. The, yeah. Judge, the judges yeah. in many cases are um, are misinformed about uh, immigrants, especially immigrants that are from south of the border. And um, hopefully they'll be able to see this and, and, and learn that, that these are human beings and not just whatever we've been taught.